Hey, Peter, I see that CBLT has some news and another acquisition. What's going on? Hey, nice to see you, Chris. Yeah, we've been after this property for some time. It is adjacent to, in between, our property called Copper Prince. The Garson Fault runs from west to east, or east to west, right across the two properties. And in 1996, it was recommended that somebody buy both of these properties, and it's not worth doing work on either one of them unless you own both of them. And that makes sense, because one person doing the work just proves up value for the other owner. We are the first owner in history to consolidate title to these two properties along the Garson Fault. There's a historical gold mine on uh, the Falcon. No production data on it because it's patented lands and nobody told the government what they were doing. We have been able to track down some reports um, that indicate this is going to be a very, very fun, interesting property to work. In the news release, you said there was some historical gold resource. Uh, what can you tell us about that? About 13,000 ounces at a little more than seven grams of gold per ton. Non-43-101, so the usual caveats apply. And it was an internal resource. They called it a mineral inventory calculated internally at Falcon Bridge. So I have no idea what metrics went into the calculation of that. So what exciting thing are you going to do in this new consolidated property? Uh, data aggregation, of course. Put together a plan. Usually going to start with sampling and mapping and make the big decisions after that. No, but you, just, you look at you look at the report that Bailey put out in '96 about the five samples he took, and they assayed 33, 50, 53, 38, and 40 grams of gold per ton. There's earlier reports from 1923 talking about seeing visible gold in the wall of the shaft and visible gold in the dumps. That's a pretty exciting property. And for those who may not know much about uh, your Copper Prince project, where are, this, are these located? Beside the Falcon Bridge Glencore Smelter, inside the city of Sudbury. So these are patented lands. You own them just like you own your house or your condo. So we don't have to report to the government, but we like to because we like the district geologist. It's one of the best programs the government's ever funded, and we like being in good terms with them. So CBLT has usually lots going on. Uh, maybe you can give us a quick update on things going on on your lithium project and any other M&A you might have happening. Sure. Our geologist in Manitoba has already made one visit to the property, took a round of samples, did more mapping, and those samples are in the lab as we speak. We've been told we'll get a 21-day turnaround on that. All right, we'll see what happens there. Um, we're doing some work in Thunder Bay or east of Thunder Bay at our Big Duck Lake property. We've been told by the other geologists that it's a Moose Lake Porphyry lookalike, and it's Moose Lake Porphyry that hosts the Hemlo area, the Hemlo gold mine. Um, we're gonna go back in, we're looking for zinc along the top. There's a historical gold resource in the middle of 59,000 tons, predating for, uh, 43101. And there's high grade copper at the bottom that has never been explored. So the team has some work to do there. Um, so there's three properties having field work. We're probably also going to revisit um, the Burt Pond property in Newfoundland. Now, Burt Pond is beside a former producing VMS mine, your usual stew of minerals. But the current thinking is that that granite may also be lithium bearing. It has never been tested for lithium. You, know, you test for gold, you test for silver and nickel and the rest of the biggies. But that area has not been tested for lithium. So our geo is doing some research and will likely be in the field pulling some uh, possible lithium samples. Interesting. So and lots going on there. How are you going to fund all this for the summer? We uh, have cash in the bank from our successful investment into Syscom. We have some other M&A underway that will, if closed, fund further fund the company. Um, we always have M&A underway. And that will be a backbone for doing a critical mineral flow through financing in an amount to be determined at a price to be determined. We haven't announced that yet to the public, but anybody can figure that out. So how does that critical minerals flow through work? I'll call your accountant and ask. It just gives a much bigger benefit to the investor if your target is one of the 30 critical minerals identified by the government of Canada in the Income Tax Act.
And which are your projects uh, satisfy that condition? Well, if we're looking for lithium in Newfoundland, Burnt Pond, obviously lithium in uh, southeastern Manitoba. We have cobalt at the rest of Copper Prince. Uh, if Copper Prince looks like this, there's a shear that runs through it. Huronian is down here, Arcane is up here. So the Arcane is what melds Copper Prince to uh, Falcon Gold. But down at the south, we have historically explored for Copper, Gold, and Cobalt, and we've reported good Cobalt numbers from the south. So it'd be easy to get back there. And if we're looking for zinc at Big Duck Lake, uh, zinc is on the list of 30 critical minerals. So you're covering off all the minerals. Uh, for, as far as news flow is going to go for the next couple of months for your investors, which uh, uh, I am, must admit I am I am as one. <laughs> I am one. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> uh, what can investors look forward to for news flow for the next couple of months? Well, the fact that we're starting these work programs and then as the results trickle in, we'll be publishing the results of those work programs and the results of the M&A, which is underway. Um, it's a tough time out there raising capital, but the M&A activity that we do seems to support the fundraising. You know, the company's 14 years old, 70 million shares out, never did a consolidation because we've always been able to do profitable M&A to keep the company funded. Well, uh, thanks for your time today, Peter. Always nice seeing you, Chris.